فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم So now we're going to be speaking about the maratib al-qawaid al-fiqiyah the levels and the types of qawaid al-fiqiyah there are okay uh, what we have to really understand is al-qawaid al-fiqiyah laysat naw'an wahidan laysat it is not naw'an wahidan it's not one type and it is not of one level no rather it is anwa and it's maratib it has levels and its types and brothers you'll see inshallah when i give you a lot of examples cuz qawaid al-fiqiyah is about examples you realize that if you don't know the dif- if you don't learn the types and the differences you fall into khalal problem deficiency and it will affect your rulings and it will affect huh, the way you perceive issues and after that then you see the problem that comes from it the first type the martabatul ulama al nawul awwal the first type is qawaid which are known as al qawaid al kulliya al kubra simple terms they're called al qawaid al muttafaq al mukh al muttafaq alayha al qawaid al muttafaq alayha these qawaid al kulliya al kubra or it can also be known is also known as al qawaid al muttafaq al muttafaq alayha is the qawaid which are very comprehensive they fall under every single chapter of fiqh and every single matter of fiqh they fall under it and they are what they are five some scholars they squeeze a sixth one in there are you with me five is what the majority of scholars mentioned and some scholars they squeezed a sixth one in there and they said this is also from the qawaid al kulliya al kubra are you with me The first one is al umur bi maqasidha and remember when we studied al qawaid by Abdul Rahman Nasir al Saudi we mentioned it is better to say inna mal a'mal dunya just like the prophet said it so the first one is the hadith or the qaida which says every action is what is intended from it inna mal a'mal bi niyyat are you with me brothers the second one is al yaqinu certainty this is the second al yaqinu certainty لا يزول بالشك or you can say لا يزال بالشك certainty is not removed with doubt the third one is المشقة تجلب التيسير hardship brings ease hardship brings what it brings ease it brings it brings ease the third oh, that was the third right The fourth one is لا ضرر ولا ضرار او الضرر يزال ضرر يزال means what <coughs> evil is is repelled it is removed <coughs> the fifth one is العادة محكمة the norms determines the norms governs It does. The norms governs. And there's a sixth one that some scholars add to it, which is إعمال الكلام Implementing a speech is أولى من إهماله takes precedence over disregarding it. Are you with me? In other words, if the scholars, they differ upon the tarjih. Is it, they differ upon how to reconcile it. If the, a, a scholar comes and is able to make sure that both of the statements are implemented without any, without jumping to the conclusion of abrogation, the one who says I can bring them together without having to get rid of any of the two, he takes precedence over the one who wants to get rid of it. صح؟ because the قاعدة which is إعمال الكلام أولى من إهماله to to implement a statement and to do it. takes precedence over disregarding it that's the first by the way that is the first type which is, is known as al-qawaid al-mutafaqi alayha sahih which is agreed upon this one is agreed upon by all the a'immatul madahib all the madahibs they implement it they is it's and inshallah ta'ala we will see it in the kitab that we're going to be studying al-fara'idul bahiyya fi nadhbi qawaid al-fiqiyya 
when we talk about how the book is divi divided, we'll speak about how he has placed that the first type, which is Al-Qawa'id Al-Muttafaqi Aliha. The second is Qawa'id, which are what? Alhamdulillah. Qawa'id, which are Qawa'id, which are Qawa'id Kulliya. They're Kulliya. But Majalan, but they are more tighter. They're, they're not as open and as comprehensive as the first type. Are you with me? In other words, it's it doesn't really it doesn't go out far reach as the first five or the far, first six do. Are you with me, brothers? Which is al ijtihadu la yanqudu la yanqudu la yanqudu la yanqudu bil ijtihad al ijtihadu la yanqudu bil ijtihadi or bi mithlihi. You can't eradicate an ijtihad with another ijtihad. Are you with me, brothers? You can't get rid of an ijtihad based on what? Based on another ijtihad. Or even if a scholar says something. He says a view, an opinion, and then years later, he makes another fatwa. Can we say he got rid of his previous fatwa? Pay attention here. A sheikh gave a fatwa. Years later, he gave the same question, same issue, a different fatwa. Okay. So can we say that his first ijtihad is now gone because the second ijtihad got rid of it? Can we say he came back from the other opinion? This qaida, which is that ijtihad cannot be got rid of with another ijtihad, is taken from the statement of Umar and when he said, This is what we judge by, and that is what we judged before with. That is what we judged with, and this is what we're judging with now. So this qa'idah fiqiyya scholars, they took from that uh, ijtihad cannot get rid of another ijtihad. And they discussed it because, brothers, pay attention. You have to realize the reason. Why are they, why? Where's the, why is the khilaf coming here? You know why the khilaf is coming? The mujtahid, for his statement to be abrogated, is he, is he a munshi? Does he initiate a ruling? Does he initiate a ruling? Is he the one who brings the ruling? The ruling is from Allah. Allah is the Hakim. Allah is the Judger. In al hukmu illa lillah. He's only speaking about what's in the Nusus al Wahyain. Sahih? And the Adilla and that. So for him to. Abrogation? No. Abrogation doesn't take place for a person's statement. Does that make sense? Abrogation is only for the text, the Kitab and the Sunnah. Are you with me, brothers? And just as a side benefit, as a side benefit. We can't deal with people the way we deal with the text. It's very important point. I have to mention this. Which is, right now what I just said. That an ijtihad cannot get rid of another ijtihad. Neither another person's ijtihad cannot get rid of another person's ijtihad. And he himself, his own ijtihad cannot, cannot eradicate his ijtihad. Are you with me? Unless what? Unless he clearly states that he's come back from that opinion. And that's what Imam Shafiq happened. Qawluhu al-Qadim and Qawluhu al-Jadid. Qawluhu al-Qadim is still implemented. His Qawluhu al-Qadim is still implemented. It's said. Sometimes you see Imam al-Rafi'i, you know where Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Imam al-Shafi'i, you see them ha, saying that Shafiq said this is Qawluhu al-Qadim and we're taking it. And they did not get rid of his new, they didn't say oh well, he's got a new view so no. They didn't. They took it. It's ijtihad still. It stands. And Another thing that also, so the issue of abrogation is specific for who? Text. If the Quran gives a ruling or something, and then the same thing gives another ruling on it, it's abrogation now. Mm. Are you with me? You is either tanaqud, contradiction, or it's what? Or hafwa or zalla or whatever, something's happened. Are you with me? The second thing, my brother, are you with me? Yeah. The second issue here is the issue of the kalam of a person. 
Can you take a mafhum from it? Can you say, since you did this, and this, and this, it, I've understood from it that this is what you're trying to say. Lazimul matter basically. Can you necessitate from a person's speech something? Can you? Just like the nusus and kitab. The kitab and the sunnah, we can do that to it. Lazimul madhab. We can, to, we can take from the kitab mafhum. Are you with me? Do we not say mafhum mukhalafa? The opposite can be understood from this. Sahih? Are you with me, brothers? Like, for example, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ This ayah gives us an understanding of that. The mafhum of the ayah that we take from, the ladat al-ishara that we take from the ayah is what? We take from the ayah that there has to be a group of people who study the religion and it is fard al We just took that from the ayah. You might not see that. It's nadrat al-faqih, which is what? فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ Ask the people of knowledge. Ahlul Dikri means a people of knowledge. So in other words, that person has to go out of his way and find a person of knowledge. So they're not all the people of knowledge. He has to go to him. Does that make sense? In other words, not everybody is a scholar. Are you with me? And if there was not a people who stood up for it, then the ayah would be mu'attal. The ayah would have no meaning. So from the fahm that we take from the ayah is that there has to be a group of people who study and learn the religion and it is for them, for them to do so. The ayah did not mention that. It's the dalalat al-ishara. Are you with me? Just like the issue of the child can be born in six months. Brothers, are you with me? No. This is how to deal with the text. This is mu'amalat ma'an musus. For example, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ Don't say uff to your mom. What about if somebody says, well, Allah said don't say uff. I'm taking it as parent. I can punch her. I can go and punch my mom. Hey, you say, you say to you, what's your evidence that you can't punch my mom? You're going to say, if Allah said to you, don't say uff. And that's the minimum. فَمِنْ بَابِ الْأَوْلَى It makes, it's more... The Quran took the minimum to show you that the maximum is not halal. Huh? This is called mafhum. You can do that to the text. But you can't do it to a human being. You can't do that to a, st- a statement of a person. Unless lazimul madhab laysa bi lazimin hatta yaltazima bihi sahibu. That's the qaida. The, the necessitating the speech of a person is not the person's madhab. It's not my belief. Unless I agree, I agree to it. I'll give you an example. I can make takfir on people today just by lazim al madhab. And human beings are like that. Are you with me? Humans are like that. For example, a sha'ira today, they negated Allah's characteristics. Are you with me, brothers? We can take from that the negation of the characteristics. <coughs> we do lazim from that, that they are worshipping adab, something that doesn't exist. So they're kufar, the sha'ira, because they worship that which doesn't exist. Because they stripped the characteristics from Allah. Does that make sense? Or we can say huh, that those individuals, Asha'ira, Afla, Kuffar, and we do takfir on them. هذه مذهب خبيثة And this is لازم المذهب ليس بلازم حتى يلتزم به صاحبه Unless the person says, ah, oh, is that what comes out my statement? Is that what you necessitate from my statement? Huh? <laughs> How did you know I believed it? The minute he says, I believed it, and this is what I meant. Kafara. Then he becomes a kafir based on that. Does that make sense? So when you look at the, 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 the refutations today between individuals, especially amongst the Salafiyyin, majority of them, majority of them get rid of it. It's based upon what? Lazim al-Madhab. Lazim al-Madhab. He did this, he did this, because he meant from this. He did this, he did this, this is what he meant by it. He said this statement, with this statement, with this statement, and you bring four or five statements together, and you say, لَازِمُ مِنْهُ What necessitates from this is this. Not judging the person by his statement, he said this. Or he did this. That's sahih. He did this and he stated this. Sah. But he, no, brother, I know he didn't say it. But why, would, why else would he say that for? Of course he means it. That's why, this is another way. The minute the person says that, what's that called? He then... What went wrong here is you're dealing with the people the way you deal because you know why? The human speech, mantuk, and the mafhum will contradict. The nusus doesn't. That's how powerful it is. You can take a mafhum, it won't contradict. Are you with me? You could do that to the nas 
and it's still so strong it won't contradict itself. As for humans, if you do the reverse understanding of our statements, kufr and balaya and palm comes out of it. Does that make sense? So you can't do that to the statement of the, the human being, a person. Sahih, brothers. So that is the second level. And that level... The second level, it falls under that, that which is known as Al-Qawa'id Al-Mukhtalafu Fiha. It's different upon. Because the only first type is what? Is what's agreed upon. Are you with me, brothers? Brothers, are you with me? So the second one is differed upon. Al-Ijtihadu la yanqudu bil-Ijtihadi. Ama la yunqadu bil-Ijtihadi. All that is what? Is مختلف فيه. It's not agreed upon. Third one is. Are you with me, brothers? Third one is. <laughs> is قواعد الفقية that are specific to a particular chapter, which is known as what? Babit. And the reason why I brought, the reason why that is the third type I brought for you all is because. Sometimes the, they mention, they refer to as Dabit as a Qawaid. Sometimes you see that. It's a Dabit and they say to you Qa'ida. Are you with me? So it's a type of Qa'ida which is specific to a particular chapter. And I gave the example before, which is what? Kullu ma sahha bay'uhu sahha rahanhu. Sah? Amma kullu wuslin sababuhu qablahu fawajibu wa kullu wuslin sababuhu ba'dahu fahuwa fahuwa mustahabun. Are you with me, brothers? Again, those qawaid which are known as babit are mukhtalafu fi, are different upon. So they fall in the second type which is al mukhtalafu fiha, those which are different upon. Are you with me, brothers? Also, from the dawabit is the qa'idah which is al ibrata fil uqudi. There's a difference. Are you with me, brothers? It's al dawabit, for example, al al sorry, al ibrata fil uqudi. Al-Alfad wal Ma'ani. And some say, la, 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 it's not Al-Fad Ma'ani. It is Al-Qusud wal Mabani. Sah? When you're buying something from somebody, what is it that we observe? Do we observe the person's saying or do we observe the person's intention? Look what they say. Al-Ibrata bil-Uqudi. Ama Al-Ibratu fil-Uqudi. In the aqd, the contracts and the transactions that are taking place between individuals, they said the concern and the observation is what? Al-Alfaz wal-Mabani, the wordings they use. Bi'tuka, I sold it to you. Even if it doesn't intend, they're not saying, we're just looking at the word. Are you with me? Others, they say, La, Al-Qusud wal-Ma'ani. I don't care about that. I'm looking at the person's intention. Sahih. Qira, amongst the fuqaha. Are you with me, brothers? So what about if somebody says to somebody? This is... And I believe it is Al-Qusud Wal-Ma'ani Al-Qusud Wal-Ma'ani The intention is what's observed Because Al-Ibrat Sorry Al-Umur Bima-Qasid Inna Mal-Amal Bin Yad Sah? The Qawaid which are differed upon Is Qawaid which only enter a particular chapter Which is known as Al-Dabid I'm Al-Dabid And I give an example of two things Al-Ijtihad La Yunqadu Bil-Ijtihad Or the Qawaid which is Al-Ibrat Fil-Uqudi Is it Al-Fad Al-Mabani or is it Al-Qusud and Ma'ani? There's this khilaf amongst the scholars. Which one of it is it? Also, the fourth type um, is Qawaid Madhabiyya. It's Qawaid that are used by the people of Madhabs. In other words, it's a, it's a particular issue for this Qawaid is only used by a particular Madhab. Are you with me, brothers? And that is what it also falls under قواعد المختلف فيها. They differ upon it because this particular madhab takes it, and the other madhabs don't take it. Are you with me? So these are قواعد مذهبية. Um, even that though it's comprehensive and it's general, but it's only general for that madhab. The other madhabs don't agree with that madhab قاعده. And I'll give you, uh, I'll give you guys one example for that. The example for that is لا حجة مع الاحتمال الناشي عن دليل. There is no proof 
this qaida which says la hujjah there is no proof when there is a speculation present in the that results from the evidence are you with me brothers What does this qa'idah mean? What's the, what does it mean? What's understood by it? First of all, this qa'idah's foundation is based upon إِنَّ التُّهْمَةَ إِذَا تَطَرَّقَتْ إِلَى فِعْلِ الْفَاعِلِ حُكِمَ بِفَسَادِ, بفساد فِعْلِهِ It comes from that qa'idah, which in other words is as follows. For example, a person says, for example, we're all brothers from the same parents, same dad. Yeah? And Dad's on his deathbed, he's about to die, and when dad dies, I come and I say to the people, brothers, huh? Um, no, no, dad is on his deathbed. Before he dies, he says, Abdul Rahman, I gave you, Abdul Rahman, you gave me, sorry, 50,000 pounds before. I'm going to give you back your 50,000 pounds. Dad's on his deathbed. And dad's saying that he, I took debt from me. And he's now paying me back. And he's on his what? 50,000 pounds. And dad just dies. Is that 50,000 given back to me? Yeah? Based on this qa'idah, which is a qa'idah, the Hanafis and the Hanabila implement. The Ahnaf and the Hanabila, they use this qa'idah. Shafi'iyya don't accept this qa'idah. Shafi'iyya, they say, this qa'idah, are you with me? It's not implemented. The Hanafis and the Hanabila, they implement this qa'idah and they say, nope, we're not going to give you the money. Reason why? They say because... There could be the speculation that he wanted to give you that 50,000 because he knows he's going to die and he wants you to take more than the rest of his bro your brothers. There's that speculation. That he's trying to give you more money and in the Sharia, is it allowed? No, it's not permissible. So he wants the other children, he's trying to block the other kids from taking the money, he doesn't like them. Maybe because they're with their mom and he doesn't want their mom to get hold of that money or whatnot. He just wants it to go to one and he says, does that make sense? They say, لا حجة مع احتمال الناس عن دليل. But their evidence is, they say that if more than one can prove that, that the money was given, then it, they, they say the money can be given to him. But if just one is saying it by himself, لا. And the father's only, the father's only got no witnesses, just the one he's given it to, then they say this is قاعدة لا حجة مع احتمال الناس عن دليل. So this qa'idah, you have to realize it's a qa'idah what? Qa'idah what? Qa'idah al-madhabiyyah. It's a qa'idah particular for a particular madhab. Are you with me brothers? Qa'idah which is for a particular madhab. And I have to mention something brothers. Qawaid that are for particular madhabs. Are you with me brothers? Is... Is a is as is, is of levels. Number one, which is the first one we just mentioned, a, which is what that some some of the madhabs they use a qaida, the others don't even agree with that qaida. They say that that qaida has no value for us and we don't consider it anything at all. Sometimes no. We agree upon the qaida. Are you with me? We agree. Um, we agree upon the qaida, but our difference of opinion in this issue is what is اختلاف فقهي بسبب الاختلاف في أي القواعد ترجع المسألة. We're differing upon this issue that we're discussing. What qaida does it go back to? We agree on this qaida, but it's just this. This issue that we're differing upon, what qaida should we take it back to? Are you with me? For example, we all agree here that ibadat is what tawqifiyah. 
and an adat is what? Ibaha. Adat is permissible. Customs. Are you with me? You can buy, you can sell what you want. Are we all together? But the asal of ibadah is what? You're not allowed to do it. So we agree upon the qa'idah. There's no khilaf upon the qa'idah. We agree we're hand in hand. But we have an issue here. Which of those two does it fall under? Does it fall under ibadat or does it fall under adat? For example, the issue of tahli'ah, greetings. The issue of what? Greetings. Is a, the issue of greetings, is it ibadah or is it adah? Are you with me? Is it al-ada or is it al-ibadah? You're saying that the tahni'ah, the greeting is al-ibadah. So for you, it is not allowed to say to somebody, ah, oh, and, uh, and for example, you can't say to somebody, have a good month, this um, happy, 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 uh, happy Ramadan. Or you can't say to them, happy Muharram. Because for you, it's ibadah. Ibadah is tawqifiyah, la yajub. The one who sees it as adah can say that. It's a norm. Are you with me, brothers? So the asl mas'ala here is what? This issue, does it go back to which of the qawaid? There's a khilaf of it. But we're not different upon the qawaid. We're different upon the mas'ala, on the mas'ala that we're discussing. Which one should we take it back to? Does that make sense? Some, so the same is ruqya. Is it ibadah or is it adah? Do we deal it with like as though it's medical issue? Or do we deal with it as though it's an ibadah, it's like adhkar, adhkar, it's a dhikr. Are you with me? Or is it like medical issues where a doctor can give you any medicine, he tajruba and experience and whatnot? Which of those two does it fall under? We don't differ. And al-asr fil ibadat al and al-asr fil adat al ibaha We're not differing upon that. We're differing upon which of those mas'alah should we take it back to? Are you with me brothers? That's one of the khilafat that happened within the madahib. And if you don't observe that, you will really have shortcoming in your discussions. The other one is, brothers, khilaf that occurs in kayfiyah how idraj al fari fil qa'idah. We differ in how. We bring it back to the same. So now look, we, this third one is what? Second one is what? So it's three, sorry, third one, right? It's third. It's A, B, and C. This is C, right? Is we, are, we agree upon which qaida that we take it back to. So we actually agree on the qaida. We also agree on which qaida to take it back to. Are you with me? But you know the problem is? We're differing upon how the qa'ida deals with this particular issue. This is the trickiest one. For example, a man divorces his wife and he doesn't know if he divorced her three or if he divorced her one. He's doubtful. He's here scratching his head. He's confused. He's baffled. He doesn't remember what took place. <laughs> So he says, and he comes up to you and he says to you, Akhi, I divorced my wife three or one or two. I don't know. What shall I do in this situation? Pay attention. The Jumhur, the Jumhur, they come and what do they say? The Jumhur al-Fuqaha, they say what? They say, one. Why? Certainty cannot be removed with doubt. We knew you had a wife and you were married to her. The nikah is the certainty. The divorce is doubt. Are you with me? We'll stick with the certainty and we'll leave the doubt. Sah? Malikiya come and guess what they say? The Malikiya come and they say, no, no, no. You have divorced your wife three. It's three. How was your evidence? Al Yaqinu la yazul bi shak. Same qaida. Okay. O Malikiya, how have you come to that conclusion? 
they say the Malikiya la yaqeen is that it's haram for you to have intimacy with a woman the asal and the yaqeen and the certainty was what tahrim al wat al ajnabiyya to have intimate relationship with a foreign woman is haram and we can't remove that certainty with doubt so you've divorced your wife three صح? so here we have قاعدةٌ واحدة one قاعدة but there's a khilaf on how the fara, the sub-branch that we have, how does it fall under it? Again, the same is with the issue of um, the issue of a person says, I don't know if I broke my wudu. He has tahara, he was certain he had tahara. What did he say? And he, he's scared if he broke it. What would you say to him? al yaqinu la yazulu? Bishak. You say, you got your tahara, keep it moving. Why would you say that to him? 